Well, here comes the sun. And the moon is looking great, too. How old are you going to be? 75. Oh, Earl, if he were just three years younger. And he had a gun like that. And he shoots me and goes in there, messes up my uh, intestines. I had to have a colostomy for like, oh, eight months. While he was in the hospital, he found out that his character sold the radio station. He wasn't going to be in the show anymore. Hey, let's throw it back to the golden era of Saturday Night Live, where the vibe was unmatched and the cast... Pure comedy royalty. We're talking about the days of Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, and the legendary Gilda Radner. These are the OGs who set the bar for SNL, making it the comedy benchmark it is today. But hold up, let's spotlight one standout star, Garrett Morris, SNL's first black cast member. And Gabriel is on a The man was straight up hilarious, a real scene stealer. Seriously, if laughter were a crime, he'd be serving a life sentence. I'm Morris talking to all you white Americans about the way black people have been treated in America. However, if you would like to relieve your guilt, I'm willing to accept money as a representative victim. Then, plot twist, his career hit a rough patch. One day, he's the toast of SNL and Martin. And the next, he's like a magician who made himself disappear. What's up with that? Did he decide to play hide-and-seek with his career or what? He shoots, goes to my arm, then to my abdomen, which caused me to have a colostomy for like eight months after that. The streets have been buzzing with rumors, but it's high time we dug deep to uncover the truth. What really went down with Garrett Morris? How did he go from being at the top of his game to suddenly out of the spotlight? The person who was producing uh, Martin uh, decided to fire me while I was actually in the hospital. Strap in and hold on to your hats, folks. Why? Because we're about to dive headfirst into the juicy details of the rise and fall, the ins and outs, and the twists and turns of his story. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, man. But uh, I got a little bad news. Uh, I ain't gonna be able to do this show after the night, brother. What's the problem? All right, folks, let's give his tea a good swirl before sipping. Garrett Isaac Morris, a gem of a man, entered the world stage in New Orleans, Louisiana on a chilly day in February 1937. Brought up under the watchful eye of his granddaddy, a Southern Baptist preacher with a twist. Now here's where it gets spicy. According to our main man Morris, Grandpa's antics were so out there, they sent Morris sprinting away from Christianity faster than you can say namaste, straight into the open arms of Buddhism. And oh boy, the tales Morris could tell. Grandpa, bless his soul, was preaching about the high road during the day, but took the scenic route at night, if you catch my drift. From sermons to secret rendezvous, he was more than just spreading the word if we're being polite about it. Let's just say the organist wasn't the only one hitting high notes, and the church ladies? Well, they were receiving more than just spiritual enlightenment. Morris discovered his passion for music at a very young age. His grandfather saw how good he was and pushed him to join the church choir by age four. But those were just baby steps. He was enrolled into the prestigious Juilliard School of Music, and in 19. 56, bagged a scholarship to attend a music workshop at Tanglewood, where he snatched the Tanglewood Conductor's Award in 1958. Talk about talent. After graduating from Dillard University, he decided it was time to go pro and do music full time. I mean, why not? Ever heard about Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death? Yep, Morris appeared in that musical and slayed it. This guy was super talented. In the 1970s, Morris made his debut in movies with the black comedy film called Where's Papa, where he played the character Garrett and went on to appear in several more films. But his big break came in 1975, when he landed a huge role on the TV show Saturday Night Live, SNL, which aired on NBC. The OG Saturday Night Live crew reads like a who's who of comedy legends. Bill Murray, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner, and Chevy Chase. Yeah, we remember him, but liking him is optional. They've hopscotched from SNL stages to movie sets and, for some, detoured through celebrity rehab. But hold up, Garrett Morris? Now here's where it gets juicy. Garrett Morris was SNL's first black performer, slicing through the comedy scene and setting the stage for icons like Eddie Murphy, Tracy Morgan, 
and Kenan Thompson. He was the blueprint for comedy duos like Key and Peele and the powerhouse cast of a Black Lady sketch show. So why isn't his name lit up in neon in the Comedy Hall of Fame? You'd think we'd be throwing confetti for Morris every Black History Month, or at least inviting him back to SNL for victory laps with the other legends. But nope, he's often left out of the limelight sidelined in the shadows. Here's the tea. Garrett Morris's SNL saga isn't remembered as a golden age of giggles. Instead, it's a forgotten chapter marred by disrespect, heavy drug use, and racism. Imagine this. A classically trained theater darling steps into the unpredictable world of SNL. And let's just say he was not ready for the comedy chaos that awaits. Morris spilled the beans to Maya Rudolph in The Hollywood Reporter, and it's juicier than a season finale cliffhanger. Morris wasn't just any actor trying to make it in comedy. No, the man was a playwright with credits that could make Broadway weep transitioning from the depth of theater to the punchy, quick-fire world of sketch comedy. The drama of it all. Morris faced off against a villain straight out of a soap opera. Racism. Picture this. Our hero suggests he could play a doctor in a skit. And what does he get? A slap in the face from the industry. Being told America wasn't ready for a black doctor on screen. I don't know what does if that doesn't scream primetime drama. But Morris, our resilient star, wasn't about to let the backstage villains win. Amidst whispers of jokes where the staff constantly made racist comments, theft where other writers would steal his script, change a few words here and there and pass it off as theirs, to conspiracy to erase him from SNL history. Morris did what any underdog would do. He auditioned for the not ready for primetime players and secured his spot in the limelight. Yet the plot thickens. Even as a cast member, Morris wasn't safe from the drama. He was thrust into roles that were, let's just say, less than flattering. Like being asked to play a flying monkey, sparking outrage among the black audience, and sending shockwaves through his fan base. But in a twist that no one saw coming, Morris stood his ground, proving he was not one to be typecast or silenced. Yes, the SNL fame came with its troubles, and it wasn't just the fact that the producers gave him stereotypical roles, it was something worse. Morris had started sniffing that stuff your mom warned you about. You know, the white powdery stuff? That one. The whole time he was on the show, he was battling with some real demons. Imagine dealing with all that, but showing up to make fans happy. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a great guy right there. None of these demons held him back, though. This maestro went on to star in the black comedy film The Census Taker as the title character Harvey, an annoying census taker. And the year after that, he appeared in the science fiction horror movie The Stuff as Charles W. Hobbs, a junk food manufacturer known as Chocolate Chip Charlie. Nah, Morris owned the 80s and 90s. We were just living in it. But while Morris was having the time of his life... Life was cooking something really sour, sour enough to almost end Morris's life. During the filming of the popular sitcom Martin, Morris was shot by a mugger in what looked like an attempted theft. But how did it happen? Picture this. Morris is strolling along in central Los Angeles when, out of nowhere, two dudes just straight up walk up to him asking for money. Morris had a big mouth, so he said, looks like someone wants to fight. Next thing he knew, they grabbed him from behind. But Morris was a first-degree black belt, so he tried to fight back. He turned around and came face-to-face with a guy holding a gun. When mm-hmm. I turn around, that's when I see the gun. I didn't know he had a gun. Had I known he had a gun, I wouldn't have done anything, right? Had he come to me like that with the gun, I'd say, hey, man, whatever you want. The news went flying all over the place that he was attacked and needed surgery. It was at this time that Morris knew that no one really gave a hoot about him. None of his co-stars offered to help. I mean, co-stars aren't friends, so we could excuse that. But here's where it gets suspicious. While Morris is lying in the hospital, fighting for his life, the show's producer, Lawrence, decides to give him the boot. That's when the person who was producing... uh Martin uh, decided to fire me while I was actually in the hospital. This was Morris's fourth major operation and his life was at stake. And what he got was a script that says his character, Stan, moved to China. So basically, while poor Morris is recovering in the hospital, they decide to kick him out of the show. The world moves on fast, right? Morris had two options, get depressed or get mad. He did get mad, but he moved on fast. 
He'd seen worse things at the start of his career. Oh, did I miss that? Morris faced so much racism, even on sets. They sometimes made him and other black actors find their hotels somewhere far away where white people wouldn't see them. One time, he was even arrested for walking while black. Basically, he was just existing, and the cops were offended. Man, the many woes of the black man. But this hurt more because Morris was part of the cast for the first two seasons of the show Martin, only for them to remove his character. As if that wasn't enough, Martin Lawrence told everyone who cared to listen that he visited Morris in the hospital and shed some tears. It's a shame that Morris never got a proper explanation for why he was let go from one of his most iconic roles. Despite the abrupt exit, we're grateful he was part of one of the best sitcom casts in history. You'll never guess who else got on Morris's bad books. His co-star Richard Pryor. Can you believe it? These two lovable personalities had a bit of a falling out. In a recent interview with Vlad TV, Morris disclosed what really happened when Richard Pryor hosted Saturday Night Live back in 1975. Morris had big hopes for their collaboration because he saw Pryor as the top dog in comedy. But honey, things didn't go as planned. Morris felt that his position on the show was important, especially because he was the first black man there, and it was inspiring to see him there. But Pryor didn't engage him in any way during the show. If you watch that episode again, you'll notice Morris never had any sketches or interactions with Pryor. Despite his years of experience and dedication to his craft, Morris felt like he was just Lauren Michaels' sidekick behind the scenes. Like, why put me on a show if you won't let me shine? Part of the tea is that Pryor later on tried to end the beef by inviting Morris to appear in the movie Critical Condition. Sixty years, this man has steadily been entertaining us, both in musicals, the SNL, and in several movies, all while battling addiction, racism, and the trauma from a robbery attack. The reward for this type of dedication doesn't come fast enough. It was on February 1st, 2024, that something big finally happened and inked down Morris's name among the greats. Garrett Morris finally got his very own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. On behalf of the Chamber and Hollywood Council member Hugo Soto Martinez, I present you, Garrett, with a city resolution. Not only was it a special day for Garrett, but it also happened to be his birthday. But we couldn't help but notice that Martin Lawrence wasn't there to support Morris. I mean, when he got his star in 2023, big names like Steve Harvey, Tracy Morgan, Taya Arnold, Lynn Whitfield, and many other big name comedians were all there. But in Morris's time, Martin Lawrence was MIA. Was there some bad blood between them that we were not aware of? Or was it since that stuff of him lying in interviews? He did let Morris down once back when the show was going on. He was in the hospital recovering from getting shot when he found out he was being booted off. However, it wasn't all drama and bad vibes at Garrett's star ceremony. He did have some support from his previous co-stars. Tashina Arnold and Jennifer Coolidge were there to cheer him on. And Christopher B. Duncan, who appeared on the Jamie Foxx show with Garrett, also showed up. It's nice to see that some of his old buddies were there to celebrate this milestone with him. The event was a mix of excitement, missing stars, and a touch of old drama. No one knows what really went down between Garrett and Martin, and I don't even care at this point. We're just glad that Garrett finally got the recognition he deserved, and that's what matters most. In the grand, glitzy world of showbiz, where fortunes are made and lost faster than you could say box office, Garrett Morris stands out for his comedic genius and his surprisingly savvy financial moves. Fast forward to to 2024, and the man is sitting pretty on a cool four million. That's right, folks. Through a mix of acting gigs, making people laugh until they cry, some smooth voiceover work, and dabbling in the high-stakes game of real estate, Morris has stacked his chips high.